Hey guys, welcome to my channel. My name is Reading Bear, and I hope you are ready for some more stories. And today, we'll take a look at some new I Don't Work Here Lady content. If you enjoyed my content, please don't forget to subscribe to my channel and post some bear emojis in the comment. And now, let's dive right into the stories. The first story is titled Sorry Bro, but I'm not a stripper. The city I live in is kinda known for its strip clubs. One of the clubs has a four-star restaurant. I went with my boyfriend at the time and made the poor decision of wearing a short, cute dress. On my way back from tipping a girl in stage, a drunk gentleman rolls his chair in front of me. He asks me for a dance, which I try to decline in the most understanding of ways. I guess he assumes I'm lying when I say that I don't work there, because he grabs my wrist and tries to pull me down onto his lap. Fortunately, this club has its bouncers on point, because as soon as I yell, let me go, the guy gets a large hand on his shoulder and is let out the door. Sorry, bruh. The next story is titled, Horrible Wedding Guest. During college, I worked for an independent catering company that mainly did weddings. People tend to be either very nice or very mean at weddings to wait staff and the company I worked for didn't really care about the customer, so I always try to go out of my way to make everyone's experience better. Because my company was independent it means that we would travel to whatever venue the wedding was being held at and didn't actually work for that venue. After dinner at this specific venue I was bussing plates and had a full stack of about 10 in my hands with silverware in between them which created some imbalance and they were heavy. I was walking quickly trying to get back to the kitchen without being in anyone's way. This woman tried to flag me down as I was coming towards her and I stopped quickly to say I'll be right back ma'am, I just need to set these down quickly. As I started to walk away she grabbed the back of my arm and squeezed it which made me drop the plates I was carrying. Luckily only a couple of the plates broke and she just sat there and scoffed while I picked them up. Once I was done cleaning up she snapped her fingers at me and did the finger signal to move and close and she said, now that you're done being a klutz, where is the gift table for me to put my gift for the bride and groom? I was so taken aback that she would talk to me this way. I explained to her that I only worked for the catering company and wasn't sure about where the venue has set that station up. She responded by saying, well, you need to do your job and find out then, don't you? In the most condescending tone I've ever heard. Now, normally, if the guest was nice, I would have been more than willing to go find the wedding planner and ask, but not this time. At this point, I was done being treated poorly at my job by guests and my bosses, and it was one of those moments I didn't really care if I got fired or not. So I got on my knees and started bowing to her saying, yes master, of course master anything for you a great one. She was pissed and her husband was mortified. I got up looked around the room, and from where she was sitting I could see a table with gifts on it. I pointed and said, I think it's over there you can see it from where you're sitting and I hope that no one ever talks to you or your kids if you have them, like you talk to me. At this point she was speechless and seemed embarrassed her husband mouthed I'm sorry to me and they left shortly after. I didn't get fired, but I chose to quit a couple weddings later after some more unfortunate events. The next story is titled Lady Orders Me to Let Her Out of No Parking Zone. I have a highly specific job that usually sends me to construction sites where I, well, somebody not knowing what I do would say, I just watch the digger load trucks. Of course, it's more complicated than this but it's not important for the story. My company is usually hired by the owner of the site, not the company which is building there. Because of this I only must work with the workers there but I am not required to do something else. So on to the story. I was sent to a construction site in the city with very few parking spaces around. Because of this, the company building there had a deal with the city to declare space alongside the road usually used for parking to a no parking zone to be able to store some of their stuff there and had set up signs to make this clear. It was summer at the time and hot. The operator of the digger and I were the only people on site through lunchtime when some lady shouted to me to come to the entrance of the construction site. I had set myself up in pretty much the only piece of shadow on the whole site and really wasn't in the mood to leave that spot. So I shouted back to her to tell me what she wants. Turns out she had parked in the no parking zone and hadn't noticed that the workers had set up a movable fence to surround that zone to be able to store their tools there without it getting stolen right away. So her car, Porsche was almost boxed and as two slash three of her car were in the no parking zone. She is still shouting at me so after seeing what's going on I get interested and move on. I get to her, covered in dust, taking my time moving up to her. She was in her 40s maybe and wore high heels and a nice dress, typical businesswoman. 
The whole time she was shouting to me to speed up and move faster, she is in a hurry. So finally, I'm in front of her. Lady, finally, that took you ages. Now move that damn fence so I can pull out of there. Why would you even box me in? I turn around slowly and look at her car. I would have been easy for me, even for herself, to move the fence and let her out. But she wasn't very nice and I wasn't obliged to help her. Me? Sorry, won't do that. Lady? What? Why would you say that? Let me out, not nice word. Me? I don't work here. I said that standing in front of here, covered in dust, wearing my high visibility vest and my hard hat. Left her speechless for a moment. Then all hell broke loose. I was lying she would get me fired, she would call the police because this was theft, she knew the mayor and all kind of other things. I just stood there, amused on the inside, just like the operator in his digger who was laughing so loud, I could almost hear him over her screeching. While it was amusing seeing her go off at this point it was a bit pissed too, because I only could imagine how this entitled brat was speaking to people, she had power over. While she was in her tirade two policemen turned the corner. She must have noticed the grin on my face because she abruptly turned around and saw the two approaching her car. Lady, finally someone who can help me. Tell us another not so nice word to move the fence so I can pull out. The two policemen looked at her and then at her car finally at me. One of them walked to the vehicle and the other approached me. PM, what's going on here? Me, she ordered me to let her out of the no parking zone, but I don't work for building company's name. I pointed to the big signs where the well-known building company advertised itself and to my name tag, I wear one in my high disability vest, with my company's name on. The policeman understood very fast, this no parking zones are common in the city. He walked over to his colleague who was the target of the woman now and said a few words to him. He pulled out a small book and began writing a ticket. Only then it downed on the lady that she was in trouble. She kept shouting that she did nothing wrong because she was boxed in and wouldn't be in the no-parking zone if only I would let her pull away. PM. He doesn't work here and you are parking in a no-parking zone. Here is your ticket. He handed her the ticket and moved the fence to let her pull out. She was standing there a few seconds with the ticket in hands, speechless. Then she got on her car, giving me the stink eye, and went off. I tipped my hard hat when the two policemen continued their walk and went back to tell the operator of the digger what happened. Had a good laugh after all. The next story is titled, I don't work here anymore. I used to work for a large bargain chain in the UK. I hated it. I liked the people I worked with and a few of the managers, but the company and the majority of the customers were slasher awful. The pay was rubbish and the way the company treated us was just crap. But I needed a job as you know I like to eat and pay my bills. So I stuck it out for a few years while applying for other jobs. And finally the gods saw fit to get me a better job out of retail. I've been working at my new job over a year now. But I still go to my old work because A. I like to catch up with the people I like who still work there and B. I love a good bargain. Now onto our story. I was pushing my trolley round, just browsing shelves when I hear a cough behind me. I ignore it and continue on my way. Then I hear an excuse me. I continue to ignore it as it's not a voice I recognize and it's nothing to do with me. Then comes the sharp tap on the shoulder and a louder excuse me. I turn around and see a former regular customer. She was always a nightmare and was one of the many reasons I was glad to get out of retail. She will be NC for nightmare customer. I will be me and FM will be former manager. Me? I beg your pardon. NC. Don't think you can ignore me. I want you to get me XXX. Me. Sorry I don't work here. And see? Yes you do. I've seen you behind the tills. You served me last week. Me? No I didn't. I used to work here, but haven't in nearly a year. So I don't work. Here. Hit someone else to help you. And see? Well you're here now, so you can help me. Me? No. And see? What do you mean no? Me? I don't work here. Now kindly piss off and let me finish my shopping. And see? You can't talk to me like that. I'll have you sacked. Where's your manager? Me? No bucking idea. And I walked off while she was screeching like a banshee and finished my shopping. I get to the tills and I'm loading my shopping onto the belt, chatting to my former manager, when she comes charging over and starts yelling. And see? You? Points at FM. I want her sacked. Points at me. She was rude and swore at me. FM. Sorry Mad Mike can't fire her. She doesn't work here. And see? Don't you lie to me. I know she works here. FM. 
No, she doesn't. She used to but left for another job. And see, shut up. She swore at me and was rude, so you need to sack her. FM, I can't sack her. She's a customer. Me, I don't work here. And see, this is ridiculous. I want the manager. FM, I'm a manager and she does not work here. Me, nope, I'm free. I'm free. And I'm also leaving by FM. FM, by redheads. And see, why is she leaving? Me, because I ducking can you belligerent old bat. And I pushed my trolley out of the shop and went on with my day. Next time I went in my FM had a story to tell me. Apparently NC was so awful after I left, she swore, threw things and generally behaved like a toddler throwing a massive tantrum, that the deputy manager banned her from the store. So FM has said if I see any other nightmare customers to see if I can rile them up into getting banned. I said, I make no promises. The next story is titled, I played as a manager to help a cashier. So, on 24, 22 at the time, and I worked as a station agent in a French airport. Those are the people in suit that checked you and your luggage in, and even board you or deboard you from planes. I worked with a French company for eight months during the summer 2018. Working there was the best. Great hours, big pay, people are a-hole, but honestly, not so bad once you learn how to deal with them proper. One of my favorite part of this job were the hours. Either from 4 a.m. to 2 p.m., or from 1 p.m. to 10.30 p.m. No weekends, nor public holidays. For most people, that's probably bad, but for me, it was paradise. We would get days off by cycle, and having days off in the middle of the week, rocks. Go get groceries with almost nobody in stores, all governmental agency open, and less people all around because they are working, a paradise. Now for the five first months there, I would always come dressed in suit, full suit, even in the middle of summer, with a tie and everything. So I would go home or stop to stores in the suit as well. After a while, I got tired and started to change clothes arriving and leaving from work. This story of course happened when I was still coming and leaving from work in full suit. It was around three months after I started. By then, wearing a suit became natural. No more of that weird, uncomfortable feeling while wearing it. It became normal. Even more, I got used of changing my attitude while wearing it like my posture and people, even in the streets, would think that I am some successful person just because I wear a suit. And I also got quite used to noticing people needing help, problematic customers and all that. I leave work at 3 or 4 p.m., had to stay longer to cover for someone, and head to a store to bring a faulty electronic I bought there. I walk to the store, wearing only my suit and carrying the thing in a bag. I head toward customer service and immediately notice a man, hand on the counter, leaning toward the cashier, she'll be Julie, and all her colleagues look tense, eyeing the guy. I shrug, not my problem. I'm not paid to deal with that one. I turn to sit and notice that all the seats are taken, so I stay up and pull out my phone. Meanwhile, this guy starts to speak louder and louder. From what I got, the issue was that he wanted to use the store card of his wife. But the store policy is that you can't use the card of another customer, even if you're their relative, as the card can be used to make credit. The guy gets more and more heated up and starts calling around for other people to join. That immediately ticks me off. When I was in training to become station agent, we learned of different types of customers. I won't go in detail, but this guy is what we call a red customer. Someone that will rally others to help them get what they want. I see Julie on the verge of tears and I try to think of something to do while the guy starts throwing slurs at her. I finally notice a paper hanging near the counter and take action. I drop my bag, adjust my tie, take my best manager face and walk to the guy. As soon as he notices me, he smirks and turns to me. You're the manager, to which I reply. Yes. While looking at both him and the cashier, as if to judge the situation, Julie turns white. He points at her and says, This employee is discriminating against me. I want to use a discount on my wife's store card. I have her ID. There is no reason that I then take a step forward. I'm not tall, and this guy is taller than me, but he still stops while I get into his face. Without a word, I point at the paper I saw earlier. It's a notice saying that any kind of harassment or insult towards an employee will result in a lawsuit and fine for the customer. It's his time to turn white or wider. He opens his mouth, but I'm faster. She is right. If you want to use that card, you need your wife to be here. Now I have to ask you to leave, or I'll have to call security. But first, you will apologies. You've been beyond insulting to her. 
a security guard that is always near steps closer, returns to the woman, apologizes in a weak voice, and quickly walks off. I walk to Julie and ask her if she's okay. She thanks me profusely. Then, another worker comes to me and asks me what to do with a product returned by another client. I giggle and pulling my airport ID, simply states, Sorry, I don't work here. I just can't stand people like this. I was allowed to pass first, got a refund, and smiles from everyone on the team. A good day. The next story is titled, None of Us Work There. Okay, this is maybe not the right place to post this, but it is jolly. And I can assure you that none of these ladies or me worked in these stores. I am teaching myself to cook because it calms me. But I'm not familiar with many ingredients so I stand looking puzzled at things on the shelves. When the pupil is ready, the master appears. Me, tall paunchy white guy. I'm kneeling on the floor at our local K. Roger, looking at what is called a country ham in these parts. Like an American prasciato, but not as delicious. A big haunch butt of pork wrapped in burlap, dollar third to five and up. Why they store them on the floor, I'd. I hear a woman's voice behind me. What do you want with that country ham for? I turned around and a little African-American lady was talking to me. Big voice for a little lady. I was going to reply for Thanksgiving, but not missing a beat, she said, you got to boil that in Coca-Cola all night to get the salt out. This was so nice, I smiled and said I did not know that, and thanked her. She said, you don't want that country ham. And she went on her way. I have never cooked a country ham, and I will never will. Another store, another year. I'm learning to cook Thai now. I'm at the aisle with coconut milk cans, like 75 different sizes and brands from different countries. WTF? Isn't it all the same? A tiny Asian woman leans past me and taps one specific brand, starts with a CH, doesn't say a word and leaves. I pick one up, buy it, take it home, cook with it and it's great. Better than what you get in restaurants, moderately priced. And as an added bonus, it comes in a small size too. Perfect for two-person cooking. We keep buying it, it's good. A third store another year, an Oriental Megamart, Tofu Isle. I knew nothing about tofu, every time I tried to cook it it turned into a sloppy, unappetizing mess. So I'm looking at some firm, what does it even mean? Tofu. Turning it over and shaking it, listening to it slosh around. Another Asian lady walks up to me and says to me, you need to pour boiling boiling water over tofu, keeps it firm. Looking at my face to see if I understood. I said I never heard that before, thank you. And now I cut perfect cubes of tofu every time. These are the anti-Karens, I love that they're out there. The next story is titled, Are You High? This happened about two years ago, was 23 and inside Target, just browsing. On that day, I had smoked a few bowls then Uber to the store. Just casually walking around with my earbuds and when the shorter, middle-aged lady pulled out my earbud and said, excuse me, I was talking to you, and proceeded to rant about the youth and our lack of work ethic blah blah blah. So I stopped her talking and asked her, ma'am, what the duck are you talking about? She then gets real close to me. I'd say my face, but I'm a 6 FT4 in big dude, and her face was about stomach high. As mentioned earlier, I did smoke. Usually I'm pretty good at covering the smell on my clothes, but I guess my game was off that day. She caught a smell and goddamn, did she go off more, yelling about how an employee shouldn't be high at work, and that's when it clicked. I realized my red flannel and tan shorts was a bad outfit decision. At this point, two employees heard her yelling and came over. She turned to them and started scolding them. One of them finally got her to chill out for a second and explained how he had no idea who I was. They did very little to calm her down. Eventually, she was escorted outside with nothing from the store. The manager apologized profusely and offered me a $1.10 gift card. Good thing too, because I was hungry app by that point. If you enjoyed the video, please subscribe to the channel and post some bear emojis in the comments.